502. Um, I'll call this uh, October 12th Board of Public Works meeting to order. Um, let's do the first order of business, be the Pledge of Allegiance real quick. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chairman, I'd suggest that maybe uh, roll call might be in order. Uh, roll call might be in order. Roll call? Yes. Um, I do not have a nice list like. Jonathan Webster has. So, look. Alderman Nelson. Here. Okay. Ass assistant uh, City Engineer Tyler David was Nikki. Here. Here. Uh, Jim Witt. Here. Um, Glenn Morrow. Here. <clears throat> Becky Specht. Here. <clears throat> um, Chuck Porter. I am here. Um, I'm getting a brain fade right now. Um, Kevin. Kevin Schleter, right? Yeah. Here. And we've got a guest from uh, Oak Creek. You're the... Mike Simmons. Mike Simmons is uh, here to join us. And you should probably note that Chairman John Webster and uh, I guess Recorder. Yeah. Chairman John Webster and uh, Ken, uh, Recorder Ken Skaronsky are... Absent. John Webster and uh, Ken, uh, Recorder Ken Skaronsky are... Absent. Absent. Yes, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I would suggest that the first order of business, uh, we're going to take a tour of Oak Creek. And uh, so any of the public that are here are welcome to join us on the trip. And um, we will return and resume the meeting when we return. Okay. Well, it's, um, for the record, it's 618. And we're back from our field trip to look at the, um, the road work that was being done over in Oak Creek. Um, any comments? We, we have a VA tour of Oak Creek Road. We, we can have your, your thoughts at that time. Okay. I suggest uh, reading approval minutes might be appropriate here. Okay. Then uh, reading approval of the minutes from the September 14th, 2021 meeting. Suspect you're looking for a motion to approve? Yeah, we're looking for a motion to approve those I'll, minutes. I'll make okay, do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay, thank you. Um, any in that motion will pass. Um, the next order of business is the public comment period. Um, so, anybody here want to? Uh, take advantage of the public comment period. You're welcome to come up and state your name. Uh, take advantage of the public comment period. You're welcome to come up and state your name and address and um, say what you'd like to say. Seeing none, we'll declare the public comment period closed. Uh, next order of business is unfinished business. Uh, next order of business is unfinished business. Um, 4A, request for blind person sign update. I'll take this one, Acting Chairman. Um, so if you recall last month, we, we discussed the situation where a gentleman uh, was having difficulty to get his mail. Um, I did send a letter per, per the board's uh, request last month. And uh, in addition, um, I believe the mayor uh, forwarded the request to some of the other elected, higher elected officials, um, Ron Johnson and another gentleman, uh, state representative. And, excuse me? Yeah, Brian Style. And uh, so long story short, they, um, I think they made reference, or made, made uh, contact with the post office. And the post office <coughs> not delivered mail to the gentleman. He was, uh, wasn't exactly excited about it. He was. He felt like that was too much. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so the issue is resolved, and, and I just uh, want to let you know that. So I do mention that because later tonight we're going to be talking about an issue with uh, John's, and I want to 
to set that stage as far set that stage as far as the ADA issue, and, and it's somewhat related to a John's issue on trash. So, so no re, no action needed on that one. Just an update. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next order of business is a uh, 4B bus stop on Speedway Drive. So at the last meeting, stop on Speedway Drive. So at the last meeting, if you recall, we, we talked about this issue. Um, you were asked, uh, I'd say Alderman Nelson asked to, uh, to get the uh, a comment from the police chief, and I've included that in your packet, yeah, I'm not in favor. Uh, since that time, the uh, service in CTS has uh, some uh, updates, and I think it would be appropriate to, to allow them to present that. Okay, thank you. Would you like to? Uh, hello, uh, I'm Tom Winter. I'm the director for the schedule of planning for the Parkland Drive uh, For the record, I'm Tom Winter. I'm the director for schedule planning MCTS. And, and David Lowe from Milwaukee County Transit and Transportation Manager. So um, I guess really at, at this point, I mean, we had, uh, Glenn and I had, had a few emails back and forth regarding uh, the bus the last email that I recall was that, uh, uh, I forget the, the name of the chief of police, but uh, we were recommended against allowing it even as a bus stop. We had initially suggested not uh, having it as a layover where the bus parks <coughs> for a few minutes and then goes on its way. Um, and then his, uh, as I say, the chief of police's response was that he did not, would not want that either. So and, and his response is that the place <coughs> Right. Could you say that again? His response is at the place tonight. You have it in front of you. Oh, yes. So really, it's, it's I mean, frankly, it's kind of up to the committee regarding next steps. So really, it's, it's, I mean, frankly, it's kind of up to the committee regarding next steps from, you know, from our standpoint. So to bring the committee up to speed, and we've included it in their packet, but you've decided to have a layover somewhere else. Can you comment on that? Right. So as... This is the end of the southern end of the route. We we have to have a end of the route. We we have to have a, a layover for the bus driver. So before the route was extended, it ended at the Hales Corners park and ride lot. So um, that's what we're going to do. Um, <coughs> we can still have the route come south um, into Franklin and go back uh, from a scheduling. So I. I I would suggest that their request is now that um, they still have a stop along Speedway, but they'd just like to stop and go. Um, you can see the police chief was not really so much in favor of stop and go, but I guess I would entertain the boards. Uh, uh, Mr. Nelson. Gentlemen, good evening. Thank you for coming here tonight. Um, I've seen that bus there now numerous times. Uh, I live right there, I go to Menards a lot, and I see it there. Chief of Police Rick Oliva's response and his viewpoint and uh, such, and the bus is still parked right in front of the big sign that says no parking, <laughs> and that's where they do this stuff. And uh, you know, and I don't wanna be this, uh, the Captain Obvious here, but have you reached out to Menards and asked them about being able to park? You know, and I don't want to be this uh, the captain obvious here, but have you reached out to Menards and asked them about being able to park and what how they? Uh, there is there is not an appetite for parking an MCTS vehicle on their lot. Uh, okay. Uh, loss of parking. Um, there's asked them about being able to park and what how they? Uh, there is there is not an appetite for parking an MCTS vehicle on their lot. Uh, okay. The loss of parking. Um, they are supportive of transit, but just not on their property. Got it. Because I know it's it's a typical balancing act because you've got a, businesses that need obviously the public safety about parking in the street and active roadway. So, um, all right. Thank you, gentlemen. I have nothing else. So, if you don't stop, you make that a bus stop on Speedway. Where where the next logical place that you would entertain to have a stop? Could it be on Highway Hundred? I think logical, um, possibly in that slip lane that takes you into Speedway. Um, and if we were able to establish a stop on Highway 100, there is that WSDOT reconstruction project coming up in 2024. 
So if we establish one, then we might be able to use that for bus pad. <coughs> Things to bring the stop up to ADA compliance once that project goes through. <coughs> yeah, um, but I think at this point, I mean, if, if, if you were to vote, you know, against having to stop there, then we would have to go back to kind of the drawing board and figure out, you know, a more suitable way to serve our customers and, and provide service. Just a question for my part. What about the parking lot on the east side of um, Highway 100? That is a controlled intersection up there that could make a left-hand turn into oh. that parking lot and then either, you know, into oh. that parking lot and then either, you know, make a U-turn in there and go back out through that controlled intersection. Is, is, is that a possibility? Um. I actually checked it out myself because we're trying to look for other options. Um, I would kind of defer to our operations people, but that <coughs> then you should, on one hand, you enter into that's a private, you know, private property. <coughs> so you have that hurdle. Okay. The other thing is just the narrowness, and, and, and this is no one's fault, but these these typically parking lots are not designed for not feasible. Um, you also run into. You know, obviously shoppers there were double parking, not terribly easy to you know, maneuver a 40-foot bus. So, I, you know, we're not really exactly looking at that as a, as a feasible option. Okay. Just just a thought. Sure. It's a good thought. If you're planning to put a stop somewhere in the vicinity, obviously we'd, I mean, if I were a rider, I'd want to stop someplace where I'd want to go. Where where do you think your folks that ride the bus are wanting to, to go? What are the, do you think it's Menards or... I mean, I think that's just something we need to evaluate in terms of what, what, what's our best. Uh, at this point, the stops that we have put in, uh, to be honest, aren't used very much. Now the route's brand new. Uh, it only started, you know, end of August. <clears throat> so it's not surprising that the ridership is minimal. Um, but um, uh, you know, these these are the but. Um, you know, these, these are the kinds of considerations we needed to look into, say, what can we do operationally that doesn't impact other property, or other private uh, property owners um, and keeps you know, service on the main route, uh, what it is. Because I would, I would suggest maybe if you did place the, um, I, would, I would suggest maybe if you did place the um, uh, stop somewhere on Highway 100, that would allow, it seems like folks a lot more options. So. Because I, I, I do think that you get a lot of folks that want to go to the, the I want to call it the strip mall, strip center on the other side, on the east side. Mm -hmm. So if you stop, at certain, they could also go to Menards because that's not the, in fact, that's probably just as close to their front door as mm -hmm. where you're stopping at now. Sure. Um, I can't imagine folks would want to go to the Quick Trip or the tire store. Um, but uh, again, I think Highway 100 would be a much, mm -hmm. much better place to do that. So. Officer, if the board doesn't have any other opinions, I, th I think maybe um, you might suggest that uh, um, you recommend that they discuss with DOT a, a location on Highway 100 that'd be an adequate place to do that. Now, are we, are we looking for? Well, if you're if you're finished with your opinions, yeah, as so a motion or or uh, that can carry forward. I'll make that motion that um, requesting uh, the transit authority to go back and look at options on Highway 100. Okay, and then okay, and then come back and, and then come back and update us on okay the and proposed new location. You can come back or just just update me and I'll update them. But so so if I could restate your motion, I think you're saying that that your motion would be not in favor of. Um, I guess your motion would be not in favor of, um, I guess your motion would be to prohibit stopping on Speedway and, and instead have a, a stop on Highway 100, somewhere near the intersection of Speedway and Highway 100. Correct. Sorry. Okay. Um, any discussion? Or we've had discussion. I guess all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>
Thanks for coming, guys. Okay, um, item five, new business, tour of Oak Creek Road Rehabilitation. We'd like to make a... So, so for the record, um, I would state that uh, we, we took a tour of Oak Creek. Uh, Mike Simmons, Oak Creek City Engineer, was uh, gracious in Simmons, Oak Creek City Engineer, was uh, gracious in uh, giving up his time to uh, talk about some projects they've done in Oak Creek regarding various methods of what I call chip sealing. And um, um, so we, we visit Pennsylvania Avenue, 10th Avenue, County Line Road, and Groveland Drive. So now that you Avenue, 10th Avenue, County Line Road, and Groveland Drive. So now that you've had a chance to view it, do you have any thoughts or comments now that we're back? Anybody? I enjoyed it. I thought it was I, I, a very intimate knowledge of how this how this works. I think we are in a position where we we have a, a financial avalanche coming down the road, a path coming in a couple of years that we're going to have to come up with some real solutions quick, and the solutions can't be to kick the can down the road. So I want to thank everybody that went along. And I thank you. Um, <clears throat> anybody else have any comments? I was most impressed with the uh, the double chip seal product, and, and but I'd be definitely interested in seeing how it holds up through its first winter cycle. Yeah, I, I agree. That was probably the concern that I had with it. Also, was its durability, overall durability, and <clears throat> but then again, it's not anything that's in my wheelhouse, so I don't really know anything about it at all, other than just observational. You know. <clears throat> Anybody else have any comments they want to share? So with, with the board's permission, we will, um, I anticipate that we're going to try to, uh, I say we, <coughs> Tyler, <laughs> is going to probably do some more research and, and uh, put the, so with, with the board's permission, we will, um, I anticipate that we're going to try to, uh, I say <coughs> we, Tyler, <laughs> is going to probably do some more research and, and uh, put together a bid spec, and we're going to try it out this next year. And um, I, I guess I would agree that the first place we, we stopped, I think that was the first place we, we stopped, I think that was Pennsylvania that had the double chips scrub, um, was definitely the prettiest of all of them. I think if we're going to go ahead and do it, let's do it so folks don't look at it afterwards and think that was a waste of money. So not that the other locations were a waste of money, but that first spot was definitely, I think, the most impressive. And uh, there, uh, comments will we will probably try to proceed and, and, and we're looking at maybe 10% of our uh, paving program to be uh, of this nature. Glenn, have you guys, um, if, if this ends up being a success <coughs> and we achieve the goals that we're looking to achieve, just to see if how many roads we'd have to switch over to doing a, a chip seal per year in order to get us through this hump and then make road improvement projects more in line with what we were seeing five years ago, the quality of the roads? That's probably a $20 million question. Uh, we, we have talked about how to analyze it. We're, we're still a little unsure how how do you rate it. So probably do something like Madison where, you know, once you start doing it, you go back and visit every five to six years and do that three times before you have to do it again. So um, the uh, discussion at Finance Committee was maybe we – the uh, discussion at Finance Committee was maybe we look at not doing this on the arterial roads. Um, and um, I think it was important for, for this committee to, or this board to go out and look at it because um, when I first brought it up, I, I know the mayor and several others, oh, no, we wouldn't, mayor and several others, oh, no, we wouldn't do that in the city with curb and gutters. So um, this is a very viable thing to, to be done with even curb and gutter <coughs> roads. And it's going to be a mindset to get over. Uh, I've been warning all that will listen that we're going to hear complaints, probably except from John's, because people won't won't notice the the trap from the trash trucks. But uh, <laughs> I think everyone else will uh, will complain and, and um, uh, won't like it because they, as as uh, Oak Creek mentioned, they, they get a lot of complaints that they feel like they're shortchanged based on their their neighbors who got a newly paved road. So we may have to get over that hump, but it's. 
it's going to be uh, an exception to it. We, we'll just have to take the phone calls. Okay. So without anything more on that, uh, the next item is uh, 5B, consideration of Franklin Road Rehabilitation. Uh, Do you have any more to say on this? Yeah, I mean, I guess the thing I would say is that looking at the city of Madison um, and the city of Wauwatosa, in, the, in your packet, there's a, at the very end, there's a map of, of Tosa. So they have a, a clear program that they do, uh, and Madison's been doing it for, uh, and Madison's been doing it for, for 15 years. Mm. So um, I think the fact that they're all happy with it, and Madison did 100 miles this year, just of the chip seal or seal coats. Okay. So they did a eighth of their roads. Um, so the fact that they've been doing that for 15, they did a eighth of their roads. Um, so the fact that they've been doing that for 15 years and do it every five years, I think it, it's been successful. And I think that's why they keep doing it, so. Okay. So then uh, 5B is also basically for information only? It require a motion, does Correct. it? Correct. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, we do have John's here, so maybe we should skip down to 5D. Sure. Okay. You can do that. Okay. Um, kind of a summary. So we, we've had folks periodically say, hey, you know, for whatever reason, they, they really do that. We, we've unilaterally said, no, we, we just don't do that. Um, having said that, there was uh, a gentleman who, who made reference to ADA. And so it, it got me to thinking that, well, maybe we, we should make reasonable accommodations as, as required by the, by the ADA law. Issue with the uh, gentleman in the mailbox. Okay. And so, you know, this board decided that, no, we, we should really try to make some accommodations. So we asked the post office to actually move the mailbox <laughs> to the other side. They found it was easier just to get out of the mail truck and hand deliver it to the, to the, uh, to the address. But regardless, if, if we're gonna require the post, we should be more accommodating with our trash service. So I'm gonna let Nate, uh, if, you, if you don't know Nate, Nate's with uh, John's. Um, he's gonna describe uh, how other communities do this and we're gonna discuss some pros and cons and I'll be looking for some suggestions on how to implement this here in Franklin. And I, I don't, I really don't think it implement this here in Franklin. And I, I don't, I really don't think it's a question whether we should, I think it's a question of how we, how we do it. So. Um, with that, I want to introduce uh, Nate. Okay. Hi, so I know John. Um, I'm Nate Austin, so I'm the account manager for John's Disposal. John is my grandfather. John is my grandfather-in-law, married into the business. Most days I work right over here at our facility in Franksville. Um, I work with all of our communities. We, you guys are probably really the only community that we don't currently offer that service for Maybe there's one other in the, we view it as a real positive because in, in my role, I look at our route efficiency and I look at our budgeting and things like that. And I've seen in some of our communities, the program get abused. And so when Glenn and I first started talking about it, my concern is, is abuse that can come with abuse that can come with that. So, you know, almost at the top, I'd want to say if there are people that need that service, we're gonna provide that, we're happy to do that as a part of our contract with the city. But because it would be a, a new program, I would say, um, you know, to this board in particular, um, you know, to this board in particular, it's gonna be really important how you allow people to use that service. And so um, the big things for us is we, we usually will say, you know, the city is our boss, so you tell us what to do and we're gonna do that. Um, but within that, so in this case, how it works in other communities is we, we gave, I think I gave one to Glenn, but um, there should be an example of the form that gets filled out where people have to request the service. And the two big things that I would point out is this service is, is for a home that has zero people in the home, not a service that we provide if there's one person in the home uh, that's currently injured or, or too old because that's the abuse that we see and I'll tell you um, in a tough hiring economy and in a difficult industry if my drivers are out on the routes 
and they're walking up carts in, you know, are out on the routes and they're walking up carts in, you know, and, and down to the driveway and servicing them for week after week and month after month. And then they see a, a young family walking around in the home, it's going to drive them nuts. Um, so I would just say if you implement the program, we'll be happy to do that. If you implement the program, we'll be happy to do that. Please uh, police it carefully. Um, and then, you know, the second component that goes along with that is it's not uh, necessarily a lifetime service to be added. Um, so typically we would ask that if, if someone in the home needs it, they, so typically we would ask that if, if someone in the home needs it, they need it either for a period of time, please let us know when to start and when, when to stop. And if it's a year after year, we would ask that that gets re-upped each year where they have to prove not to us, we don't need to see the medical information, anything like that, but we want the, to know that the city is kind of the is kind of behind us and saying, hey, we're gonna we'll mail out something to the 15 people that need it and um, things happen, people move or et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's, that's been our conversation so far, um, but know that, know that we're happy to do it for people that need it. So go. Um, however, the issue we gen entered with, encountered with the gentleman from the, I'm sorry, this feedback. Um, so, um, I'm not sure which one to do. Yeah, yeah. Let me, somebody, that helped. Okay. So the, so the, uh, the gentleman that had the issue with the post office, um, post office's response was, initial response was you're not eligible because other people in the house can do it. Well, we took the stance that that's not really being um, accommodating to, to someone that's kind of rude. Um, accommodating to, to someone that's kind of rude to say, you know, find someone else to, to who's able-bodied in your household to come out and do it. So we did take that stance. So it seems kind of seems kind of uh, contradictory if we were to take that stance with our trash service. I guess I, I would suggest I do love the idea of sign up and maybe show us a doctor's statement. Doesn't need to tell what the issue is, right. but saying that they're unable to take the card out to the trash each week. Um, we would then relay the information to the to Johns. I envision a program where when the year is up, we would we would maybe send out a reminder that we, um, if if someone happens to, you know, if grandpa lives in a house and the entire family wants to get that statement, I think we, you gotta kind of let it because I, I appreciate what, what John's concerns is about, you know, having grandpa who lives with an able-bodied family, you know, just because having grandpa who lives with an able-bodied family, you know, just because grandpa has the, can get the sticker, then the family takes advantage of it. I, that probably is wrong, but I don't know that we might, I. I have a hard time believing that we would see that kind of abuse. I, I promise that you will. Yeah. <laughs> and I and I just know that even, from our even if we ask for it, and I just know that even, from our even if we ask for a re up every year. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And it's it's that's not it. You guys have to make the decision on that. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I mean, we're going to fall in line with that. I'm I'm just telling you it. It, it just drives you nuts. And so and the other question is, you know, if I was a day, you know. How does the city then advertise this program? If you, this is an exaggeration, but if you take out a billboard or if you do a direct mailing to all your people and you say, hey, now this is offered, I guarantee you're gonna go from zero or one person that's communicated recently with the city to now there's 400 people that need it. But I'm sure we're, we're, we'd get out fairly quick to the folks that, because we do get a handful of phone calls each year. <coughs> and if we start allowing those, and I'm sure they would tell their friends and so forth, but. I guess I'm looking for some guidance from the board. Are you okay with us saying you must be the only person in the household or, or uh, uh, reach out here for some guidance? Uh, Mr. Nelson. Uh, first off, Mr. Austin, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, I do like to always take these opportunities when we <coughs> do appear to thank you again for the service you provide to our city. I am nothing but you know, a lot of my life. Uh, number two, I, I believe that in a, in a community of 36 
36,000 plus, we would that in a, in a community of 36,000 plus, we would have to have some sort of checks and balances in place to make sure that there is not a fraudulent uh, issue. Uh, I could imagine, I, in fact, I was off last Monday and I had an opportunity to take a more things down and talk to one of your drivers, a very personal gentleman, and he had good people. Mm. And I could see people getting frustrated and having more to do more, and, and, and that's the thing that we want to avoid. So if there's some way, some equitable, transparent way that we could do, if there's a, a confirmation <coughs> process, obviously we're not going to violate HIPAA laws, but if you shot a number up there earlier, like 15, right. I, would, I would put a, a zero or two at the end of it if it's in our city, if it's this word itself. Right. And we just want to make sure that it's going to be legitimate. So, so my question was, would we want to have someone? Yeah. So, so my question was, would we want to have someone certify that they are indeed the, or that there are no able-bodied people in yes. their homes? My, my personal opinion, okay. speak only for myself, no other members of the board, is, is yes to that. And I believe you would support something like that. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know. The yeah, and I don't, I don't know the logistics of how you would press into that, you know. But I, I would say, even just clarifying, I mean, people are going to, if you've got people in the city that want to take advantage of us through a new program, they're going to find a way to do that. I don't think most of your residents want to. Um, some of these things get weeded out in time, um, you know. Our, I'll tell you flat out, I mean, the, my drivers might say to me, hey, this, something doesn't seem right here. I'm doing more work for this guy than for his neighbor, you know, and I can see that they can do it. Or, you know, another constant complaint I'll hear from the drivers is, hey, X route, they're brought back up. So if you can bring them back up, why can't you bring them down? <laughs> so there, there are things that we see just in the, in the normal process with that. So perhaps I'll work on a, a draft policy and, and have it for you at the next meeting to, to bless or this thing it doesn't bless things so <laughs> i'll have you approve it at the next meeting and then we'll adopt a policy and so forth so i'm hearing that that we we do want something for a form to fill out we want them to certify i guess the question is what's your thoughts on a doctor's statement or just a cert just a certification that say i certify that i am I not able becky um i would say Dr. Um, I have one question. Okay, Dr. Um, I have one question. Is there any additional cost to the city for this service, or is it kind of rolled all together, or how does that work? It's not. It's not something that we would charge for. Um, but when we look at rates each year, essentially, you know, I audit our routes and I see how things. That's the concern for me. If there's a handful, it's a. It's a nothing. You know, that's a. That rolls right in. If that number jumps to a high number very quickly, well, that translates to additional route try time and driver time, and you know, and, and that would be, again, I'm I'm not trying to paint a picture like we're hard to work with, but we've never had it. Where so I would I would say that we are looking to potentially extend John's contract at the end of 22. Correct. And uh, so if uh, you know this will give him some time to to realize if it if it does indeed cost more it. It, everyone will pay for the service. Mm -hmm. can, I ask, can I ask a question? For the service. Mm -hmm. can, I ask, can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. There's a garbage refuse hauling company. They have a little truck with a little dump box in the back. And they, they park their big truck, and the guy goes down the road quite quickly. I can't remember the name. Now, quite quickly, I can't remember the name. Now, could that be viable? So you got to go to this house, get their garbage. You have a little truck instead of the big truck going up and down the driveways or whatever. We do that. We, we have that service. We would be called up the drive, and typically it's a one-ton pickup truck. This we would be called up the drive, and typically it's a one-ton pickup truck that right. dumps on a rear load. Um, so we do offer that. In this case, always the most efficient person to do it is the route driver that's in front of that home. So. 
they want to do, you know, anyone's. And so they're, so when you think about the makeup of some of your neighborhoods in the city, you're going to see your neighborhoods in the city, you're going to see this neighborhood's going to have a lot of them right away, right? Maybe it's an older community that, that lives together, and there are going to be some routes that have none. Um, so that's just kind of the way that that works. Um, but we use those trucks more uh, typically for longer driveways, so we that's don't. What the, the driveways are, they're long. That does, you know, one other one other piece that goes along with it is um, typically we will say we'll provide walk-up service for those that need it up to a certain length of driveway, whatever the you would feel the standard length would be in the city, because we don't want the drivers walking a half mile up and a half mile back with carts. Mm -hmm. But there are people that do want that. Okay, um, are, are, are there any other questions? No, are we, do we need a motion to move this forward, so, revisit it next month, or uh, how do you want to do it? I would suggest let me write a policy, and okay. I'll... But next month, or uh, how do you want to do it? I would suggest let me write a policy, and okay. I'll present this information back next month, and you can adopt the policy next month. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. <clears throat> Thank you. So then, uh, getting back on the agenda... C. C, yes. Franklin adopt a road program. So we had, um, I believe it was National Honor Society with Franklin High School reach out and, and I may be wrong about the club, but there was a club at Franklin High School that reached out to us and asked if they could adopt a road. <laughs> so um, looking into uh, what's going on. So um, Isabel Jardis is, was an intern for us this summer. Um, she did some calling around. She was able to find that the city of Mequon has an adopt a road program that they pretty much mirrored from the state highway uh, policy, mirrored from the state highway uh, policy. And I forgot to bring the map tonight. Um, but uh, the, the uh, city of Mequon has adopted the state policy to a city version and I've had the um, city attorney, so the um, city attorney's office, and the city administrator's office, and they had a few minor comments. Uh, I think one of which we should have our insurance company look it over and, and make sure that it's okay. But what I've enclosed here is the city of Mequon. Now, if you've had time to read this tonight, this works well. And uh, we would allow roads to be adopted in, in Franklin. Um, we would not adopt out the state or the county roads because those are have other entities that would adopt those, um, you know, the state or the county. And then instead of adopting, so we're talking the Drexels and and you know Oakwood Road and uh, 51st and you know those kinds of roads um, is what I would look and maybe do it in one mile chunk segments. I forget how many mile chunk segments there are. I, again, I have a map of it. I was going to bring that tonight. I forgot it. My apologies, but um, I'm seeing no. I have no. Yeah. So may I suggest that this would be your homework before the next meeting? Um, I will regurgitate this for the most part. Take out Mequon and put in Franklin. Take out their rainbow logo and put in our, our Franklin F um, and all those. Um, uh, for the most part, and then we can, so if you haven't had a chance to review it, I'd like to discuss this at the next meeting, so. Um, thank you, and I have one question. On a lot of these adopt the road programs, they'll be putting a sign up that would say that this road has been adopted by whatever group, will that, they'll be putting a sign up that would say that this road has been adopted by whatever group, will that, will we be doing that or? Yeah, I, I believe there's a charge that we would charge and we, we do have the ability to make signs and I need to find out how much it would cost us to make a sign. We probably should come up with some sort of sign design that we could we could make it DPW. We have the ability. Okay, so you, you don't need a motion on this? This is just, we'll pick it up again well, next? I'd appreciate any comments for those of you who've had a chance to look at it. All right, does anybody have any other questions or comments to share with? I do not know. No. And then what group would manage this? It looks like there is a um, like a coordinator, a 
this activity. Um, the city of Franklin, who would we have in charge of you know, managing? Have in charge of you know, managing? Unless, staff. unless Kevin wants another <laughs> thing to do, I, I, I wouldn't have a problem with <laughs> engineering staff um, overseeing this. So, would that be something that would come before us? Would that be something that would come before us? Yeah, so like I said, I'm going to basically take these MAC1 forms and for the most part, just swap out MAC1 with Franklin and they'll be in your packet next month and and I would appreciate your your comment and approval. Okay, thank you. We don't need any further action on that, right? We just no, sir. We're good, okay, thank you. The next thing is um, 5E Franklin, uh, what is that? PPII. Private property inflow and infiltration reduction policy. I, I um, want to give you a history. So uh, MMSD, of which Becky is a, is a part of the part of the MMSD that we deal with uh, regarding private property inflow and infiltration. It's called PPII. It's in essence uh, a concern about clean water. It's clean water mixes with the dirty water. It's all dirty water, and it all fills up our, our tunnels and and causes more maintenance that uh, that Dave, Mr. Wozniki, has to treat down at the plant. <coughs> so there are funds allocated to each community based on I'm not sure exactly how the formula works out. Equalized distribution. Equalized distribution. I still am not sure what that means, but so it's the value of the amount of money that's collected via taxes, that percentage that comes into us, um, we then use that multiplier to distribute back any money. So the amount, equal amount of money coming in from each municipality is also, so the amount, equal amount of money coming in from each municipality is also the same ratio as what goes out via mm -hmm. our carriers programs. So Franklin is accumulating a lot of money every year. And we have used this program for the Ross and Holmes area uh, of recent where we basically, uh, over three, three projects, we, we picked certain blocks and we said, you know, we, if you have a problem with your sump pump or some of those other issues that cause I&I &I on the private side, um, there are funds to, to go on private property and fix this. And so it was uh, uh, labor intensive. Uh, we fixed several homes, uh, the money per home. I don't, I don't have the exact numbers. Uh, later, we, we accessed this fund. Um, we, we made the successful argument that when we disconnected all the sump pumps, the sump pumps then put the water out in the ditches and didn't have any place to go and create a mess. So that we use this fund to help pay for, uh, we use this fund to help pay for um, the subsurface drainage uh, that, that happened out there. So we're not really sure how to, how to continue this, this project forward. Um, it's quite honestly accumulating faster than we can spend it. So the thought was is that we would like to um, develop. So the thought was is that we would like to um, develop a program open to pretty much anybody that we would basically offer a, a we'll pay for the inspection of the home. And, um, and then if there are fixes that need to be done, we would, uh, we, this would, fixes that need to be done, we would, uh, we, this would give them the uh, give them a gateway into funding. So, you know, something that may cost thousand, two thousand dollars, they could get you know at least half or a majority of that cost uh, through very the pipe check program spe specifically. Very, the pipe check program spe specifically at MMSD uh, basically give them <coughs> give them access to those funds, and they could they could get the uh, the problem fixed. So we've had a committee. Um, a subcommittee get together and we've kind of come up with a with a policy and the thought was we'd like to bring this to the Board of Public Works. I'm looking perhaps maybe that's I, I was hoping we could have a, a, a in-depth discussion tonight uh, how this program would work. Uh, Common Council did did suggest that uh, we need a um, someone besides the engineer to to sell this project to look explain what it is, so we've talked to a uh, uh, public relations agency to help us basically uh, tell the message, and so that that's really the only cost to the city. We would 
we have uh, could be we're budgeting twenty five thousand um, dollars for this agency to help budgeting twenty five thousand um, dollars for this agency to help craft the message um, and then um, and maybe maybe do some of this distribution and some of the publicity if you will um, but the policy is is described here um, my hope was is that tonight we'd have a luncheon and then I would take all of your comments and at the next meeting we would talk about uh, any changes and, and adopt it and then I could take it to Common Council with your recommendations so then we would pass it. Um, the What you see in your packet is the draft version that we um, that the committee had a, a differing opinion on so I highlighted in yellow if you look in your packet. There is the policy specifics of affected parties. The idea was is that um, we wanted to well, for one, let me see the property in the city of Franklin, but we would try to target the ones that we wanted to, to really look at. So we would start with the basins where we are experiencing the most problems. So when, when I and I happens, it causes, uh, in this case, uh, St. Martin's list station. Uh, this is the, the prioritized sub basin. Uh, so that, that's our main focus. We would like to <coughs> look at homes in that area. In addition, we would we would use our GIS tools and we would prioritize the homes um, through various methods. We would try to figure out which are the, maybe the oldest homes. We'd start the oldest homes first and come forward till we don't see a return on our investment. Then maybe we'd switch switch base, come forward till we don't see a return on our investment. Then maybe we'd switch switch basins. So we have a prioritized property owners. So the idea was, um, you can see one example was we call them prioritized property owners. Um, how we would basically tell folks that their their turn is coming up. Basically, tell folks that their their turn is coming up because there's a, a desire that um, uh, if we send out the uh, a notice, you know, we I don't know. I, I guess you could read it yourself, but prioritize and then then voluntary property owners. So we had a lot of discussion in the group. The first part, prioritize property owners. You say or someone had suggested language. Or then alternate. So basically, there's three three options for a prioritized property owner. The voluntary property owners. Uh, again, there's there's three different options there. So, um, you know, anyone could sign up. There is your acceptable. So, for example, if we're not focused on your neighborhood, if you know that you have problems and you're getting ready to fix some things, you can sign up for the program and invite us into your home, and we can we can do that. The whole idea is is that this isn't mandatory per se. You know, there would be an option. So if you decide not to do it, that's fine. But and so if you decide not to do it, that's fine. But we need to somehow come up with a, I, I'm going to call it a convenience fee. And we try to come up with the minimal amount convenience fee as possible. Five bucks a week seems like the least amount to at least catch their attention. There, I will tell you, experienced students in similar programs in other states that there will be, I'm guessing, 20% or more of the people saying, not worth my time to, to allow you into my home to be inspection. I'd rather just pay the five bucks a week. And so that, that would, that's fine. They could, they could do that, and that would stay on there forever until they decide to actually get the, this policy. I was hoping you'd read it for tonight, but um, the next meeting, let's have a discussion so we could uh, come up with a discussion so we could adopt it or make a recommendation. Okay, um, any questions or discussion? I have one question, just so I have inflow of water going into the sanitary sewer system that shouldn't be going there. Correct. So typically, that, the biggest culprit is, is sump pumps. People will have a sump pump, and they'll district, they, don't, they don't want to dump it to the yard because maybe it creates ice on the sidewalk or something, so they, they replumb their house. So it all goes in the sanitary sewer out of sight, out of mind. It's, you know, our pumps go crazy trying to keep up with mm. all the flows. We've been fortunate we haven't had any overflows, but um, those kinds of events do, you know, it, it uh, makes my sewer and water department uh, not sleep easy during rain events. <laughs> yeah. So. so the major focus of the private property. <laughs> yeah. So. so the major focus of the private property employee <coughs> infiltration program is really to get education out there to the homeowners and also to get work completed. Um, as Glenn said, 
our biggest violators are sump pumps that are being discharged to the sanitary sewer. However, um, prior to 1950, however, um, prior to 1955, it was allowed for homes to have their foundation drains connected directly to the mm -hmm. sanitary sewers. So um, unintentionally, a lot of homeowners are probably still discharging excess clean water into the sanitary sewer. Mm -hmm. Also, there is a severe lack of education for lateral and are repair, required to maintain it and repair it at their, at their cost. Right. Um, so this policy is out there to provide education to the homeowners of their existing conditions in their home by having that clear water evaluation completed on their home where they have a um, qualified personnel go in, take a look at their existing conditions, do the CCTV, which is the televising of the sanitary sewer lateral from the house to the main, and um, really get the homeowner perspective of the existing conditions and things that they should do in order to reduce that INI going into the system. Um, do in order to reduce that INI going into the system. Um, increased INI has impacts on the needs to upgrade sanitary systems downstream from uh, subdivisions. Mm -hmm. um, also, a, um, it increases the amount of sewage that has to be treated, which then increases the amount of money that we're on sewage that has to be treated, which then increases the amount of money that we need to put into the cost of the repairs that we do on our main collection systems and also at the plant mm -hmm. and our regular O&M costs for running the plant. Mm -hmm. um, we've done some extensive studies in regards to, um, um, we've done some extensive studies in regards to um, where it's best and most effective to start putting our money and because of the extensive work municipalities do, because they're very <coughs> aware of the fact that they need to maintain their sanitary sewer systems. And the same with MMSD, we go through ends of our collection systems. However, homeowners don't do that regular type of maintenance that we see municipalities and, and MMSD do. Um, so we've done studies that have shown that the highest amount of clear water still coming into our sanitary sewer system is actually coming from private property whether it be plant, mm. roots. So your neighbor is calling Mr. Hooter every six months. That's allowing, if it's allowing sewage out of your lateral and allowing water in. in, it's allowing clear water in. And mm -hmm. especially when groundwater tables go up because of rain events, it's the easiest path for tables go up because of rain events. It's the easiest path of least resistance to get water out from the home is going down that sanitary. And as you've seen, you know, the reports, we see drastic increases in um, the amount of water at the treatment plants right. during major rain events. The amount of water at the treatment plants right. during major rain events. Yeah. So this is our effort to um, start dealing with the many sources of INI coming into the system. You know, two, two ways of getting information that come to mind with me is the Franklin monthly newsletter or semi-monthly. And another would be bill for sewer usage to include something. Could something be included in that bill? Yeah, we're, we're going to use every access we can. But I can <coughs> tell you. So, for example, uh, on the water department side, you know, if uh, if uh, you have a meter that runs 24 hours, we notice those cards that we send them. <laughs> we send them. <coughs> cards, so, uh, you okay, sir? So. Um, um, so anyway, just to let you know that um, uh, we will try those, but again, we are looking to have, uh, um, uh, and uh, they have some, I think, some very creative and, and unique and somewhat comical ways that will catch people's attention. Uh, I've got some really nice ideas, and like I said, I, I can't wait to, to get them started on their project. But uh, I would before next month if you could read that and we could that and we could have a detailed discussion at the next meeting. Okay. Well, thank you, and yes, we'll have to do that. <coughs> and nobody else has anything else to. Okay. Then I guess the next order of business is the. Um, I guess the next order of business is the um, election of a chairperson and and the. Um, board recorder. How do we want to handle that this?
month considering so, either one of them are here. So the, uh, <coughs> um, your, uh, I forget what the actual term is, but um, your rule that it shall be done in October. So it needs to be done tonight. I would suggest to you that if you want to say nominate Jonathan or, or Ken to an office that uh, we could, you know, it could be contingent upon them accepting it. We'll find out the next meeting. Uh, but the election does need to happen tonight. Uh, just so you introduce everyone to Jim Witt. Uh, <coughs> Jim, how long have you lived here in Franklin? How old are you? 65 years. <laughs> so uh, he, he, he grew up here. He lives on 51st Street up near college in, in that area. Um, he uh, works for Grafe. He's an inspector, so he's very familiar with was Kevin and his sister, so he's very familiar with was Kevin and his, his staff and uh, Mike and, and his staff and, uh, and my engineering staff, and we think very highly of Jim. And uh, Jim Barnicki, as you know, uh, stepped down a few months ago, and, and I'm very happy that the mayor has appointed Jim, and, and uh, Jim is, I think, will be a valuable appointed Jim, and, and uh, Jim is, I think, will be a valuable asset to, to this board. So I'd like to introduce you to Jim, and maybe before the election, Maybe if you go around just so Jim gets to know each of you. So we'll start with uh, Alderman Nelson. Uh, John Nelson, Alderman District 6 over the North Cape Road. And uh, I appreciate our discussion. Built that subdivision that's all on eight roofs in your new district. Wait, which one? Um, Ryan Meadows. Oh, yep. excellent. Well, welcome, sir. Thank you. And because of uh, John, we now have a, or Waterford's very safe. Uh, <laughs> Good job, Mike. Uh, I'm Dave Wisnicki. I uh, live near 41st and Ryan. Um, I uh, work for the MMSD, as uh, Glenn was saying. Um, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, Chuck Porter. I also live on North Cape Road, right down. Longtime resident of Franklin. And pleased to meet you. You too. Becky Specht. I'm with MMSD. Person for Franklin on the private property and zoning probation program. <clears throat> so, having said that, I would suggest to you it might be appropriate to take nominations for president or chairperson. Chairperson. Yeah. President still has three more years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll open the floor for nominations. Would anybody like to make any nom? All right. We'll open the floor for nominations. Would anybody like to make any nominations for chairperson for the Board of Public Works? Well, I will. I will nominate uh, uh, Jonathan Webster. Going to be contingent upon him accepting it. Okay, contingent upon him accepting it. Uh, do I hear any other nominations? One time? Two times? Three times nominations are closed. Jonathan Webster's been nominated be the chairperson pending his uh, acceptance. <clears throat> the next one is nominations for... Uh, Mr. Chairman, I... Okay. Can I have a vote on that? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. I'm a little rusty on my parliamentary That's procedure. Fine. Okay. The next one would be the election of board recorder or um, nomination for board recorder or... Um, Nomination for board recorder. Would anybody like to uh, enter? I'll nominate Mr. Kronsky. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Any other names? Okay. Any further discussion? Close uh, nomination. Further discussion? Close uh, nominations. Hmm? Close nominations. Close nominations. Um, motion to accept the nomination for. Um, Mr. Skaronski, pending his acceptance. <clears throat> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, the next item is scheduled for next meeting. It'll be in November. suggest to you the November 9th. November 9th at 6 p.m. At 6 p.m., yes. 
We don't need a motion for that, do we? Nope. Motion no. to adjourn, though. But we need a motion to adjourn. Who's going to make that one? I'll make that motion. Okay, good. We've got a motion. Second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Who would do that? The ayes have it. We're adjourned at uh, what time here? Uh, 7.30.